A lie, a scam, a fraud! <laughs> Yay! First ever episode. Welcome to everybody watching. Sade, how do you feel? I'm a little bit nervous, but you know what? Like, this is something I've wanted to do for ages. Just get all my thoughts out in one place with a good person who also has like similar points of view as me. And yeah, how are you feeling, sister? Um, I was a bit nervous. I've always wanted to do it as well. And I did start something with my brother, but you know, work ethic and stuff like that. So I'm glad I found, I finally reached out to you and I was like, do you want to do it with me? <laughs> so of course. I'm so and you know, there's no one else I would do it with the star. Oh, thank you. Same here. We vibe off each other so well. So it's so good to do work together actually. Mm hmm. Like, the first day I saw you at Uni Bro, I was like, I want to be friends with that bitch. She looks cool. I was like, oh, yes. And I feel like we had, like, a mutual feeling about that, eh? Oh, I remember the first day of school. I think we really, like, vibed. It was our first break or something. I remember all the girls kind of, like, we all sat together. But we kind of, like... <laughs> On my first day, I sat alone. And I was like... <laughs> And we, I was low-key crying, not going to lie, New City, it was like being like the new kid and, you know, I didn't think, I don't think it was maybe until like the third day I actually kind of plucked up the courage to be like, oh, hi, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember we had like a big group of girls, but we kind of like kind of dropped off from the other girls and it was just like us three um, for reasons that yeah. all girls are not friends with other girls. <laughs> Just bitchiness, hey, it's just, it's so stupid. Some girls kind of like make other girls feel like they're beneath them, whether it's because of, you know, the way we look, um, what we are, um, or it's because, I don't know, they just think they're better than Where we come else. from. 100%. Yeah. Like, sorry, I'm not from East Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm not from the North Shore. All right. So, the west side. <laughs> oh my god, I know. And I just like remember thinking back. I thought that the high school shit ended at high school. You know, like the jealousy, the cattiness, the bitchiness. You know, the talking shit. You know, I thought that was all over with at high school and I got a really fucking rude awakening at university when it was still happening and I've even had rude awakenings recently you know as a 25 year old woman oh it, it never ends it never fucking ends no it doesn't and people I think because we always call it high school drama it's just maturity levels oh yeah you just 100%. come across people that just aren't at your level and then you just feel like you're dealing with kids and kid shit a hundred percent. So today we're kind of going to cover some things that we wish we knew before the age of 18. Because when, like when you're 12, bro, you think that you know everything. You, you're fucking fear poco, you know, you box your way through life. <laughs> and you don't really know what you're doing. And there's certain things that I wish that I would have known back then that you know, might have saved me a bit of heartache, saved me a bit of, a bit of hard, you know, the hard lessons. So true. And I feel like one of those things, I feel like because we're 18, we're like, oh my God, this is a brand new world. We're, all, we're adults. We can drink alcohol. We can go out when we want to now. So I think we kind of yeah. take, you know, the adult things for granted and we don't consider them until we reach our later 20s. And then we're like, oh shit. Yeah, we just, and then, you know, we get to later on in life and then we kind of regret not doing things earlier or not knowing things when we were kind of starting out in our adult lives. So I guess this would be an episode to teach the young'uns to not do what we did so that, you know, they don't struggle as, as much as we are struggling or did struggle. 100% sis. That's why this podcast is called Ask Your Aunties because we're your aunties. We're here for you. We're here to give you the real fucking tea in life. Because, you know, the media sugarcoats a lot of, you know, like growing up and getting old. Like, yeah, it, it is cool. Like, it, it is cool being an adult. But there are so many things 
that you don't even consider when you're 18 years old that you're going to have happen to you. You know, you just think, oh, life's a dream, life's great. And it is, you know, life can be great. But there's just certain things that the world does not fucking prepare you for. There's no fucking handbook. And that's what we're here for. 100%, 100%. So what would be the first thing you wish you knew when you were 18? Boys ain't shit. (laughs) (laughs) Don't waste your fucking time on a little boy who still lives at home, mum still washes his kids, he's still on the tip. You know, and, and when you when you find a man like that, or a boy, rather, um, you really don't think about all these extra other things that come along with being in a relationship, like, you know, sharing the chores and getting up for work and helping each other out and, and supporting each other through, through things that, you know, you didn't think you would ever go through. Um, so, you know as shallow as it sounds like back in the days I would really only go for looks and like you know but someone with looks oh ho, doesn't do much <laughs> that is so true I think that um in my personal experience like you want to look for somebody that you can see not only a future with but you can see them being responsible having a job paying the bills, helping you out with the kids. Like, you got to think about, I know you're young, but you got to think about the these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't need a partner that, like, you know, still wants to just game all day. It's okay to game, but there's a certain time and place for that. So you want boundaries, someone that... Limits. Yes, boundaries. Setting your boundaries. So important. And obviously, you're going to have to go through a few frogs to find your prince. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But don't get into toxic relationship if you see red flags leave even one go it's Please not worth leave. it like there's just such a common misconception around relationships where as we like jealousy and like control is deemed as like validation and love and it's just such an untrue narrative and you know someone that truly really 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 loves you will literally go to the ends of the earth to do whatever it takes to not necessarily keep you happy, but to, you know, keep the relationship um, mutual and, you know? Yeah, 100%. And you want someone that considers, you know, your needs as well. Because I feel like as women, we always are looking at, you know, what does my man need? What does my partner need? Can mm-hmm. I, you know, you, you mm-hmm. bend over backwards and you do all these things, but you need that return to you as well because you deserve it too and a lot of women they they don't consider their own needs they're like oh it's okay like you know that's fine he's a bad boy I'll look after him I'll make him good you know it's it's not like that oh I'll change him bitch no you won't no you won't all right (laughs) he changed for me (laughs) no he didn't he's still the same darling yes (laughs) And we've both made those mistakes. We we both know it. And I mean, it's good to look back because you kind of know what you want now, right? You kind of like, okay, I don't want that. And you kind of look for those qualities that you do want in the next partner. But also remember not to set too many expectations on your partner where they feel overwhelmed and they're like, whoa, like. Hard out. Because <laughs> you got to think about all those Hard things. Hard out. That's too. actually a really good point, sis, because yeah like i know well not personally but i've heard of people who really expect a lot out of a relationship like in terms of like financial support and i want this and i want that and i want to go here there and everywhere um you know it's nice to have someone to look after you but like to a certain degree well actually you definitely have to look after yourself and know how to look after yourself first and foremost And that's, like, really important, especially when coming into a relationship. Like, you need to know yourself. You need to know who the fuck you are. Yeah. You know? That's so true. And you you got to be a queen on your own. And then you need to find someone that can, you know, go on that same path as you instead of you being treated like a queen. That's not their responsibility. You need to treat yourself like a queen first. Yeah. And also, you teach your man how to how to treat you too. You you set the boundaries. You set the um, 
you know, the expectations. So at the end of the day, you just like have to have a good relationship. You have to communicate these things. You can't just, oh, he'll know, you know, or like, you know, all guys should know what to do. Like, you know, in the movies, it's like, this, it's nothing like the fucking movies, all right? It's a scam. It's a fraud. <laughs> That is so true. I feel like because we expect them to read our minds. Let's be real. We're like, you should know. No, I need to tell my partner, you need to buy me this for Christmas, this for my birthday. And he appreciates that because he's like, at least I'm not buying something or getting you something that you don't even want. Communicate to me what you want and I'll make it happen. That's how you kind of run a relationship because I can't expect yeah. him to know everything. Nah, and you know, a lot of women, like when I do my question boxes on Instagram, they'll say, you know, like, oh, I'm unhappy, you know, I'm this, I'm that, my partner does this, and it pisses me off. And, you know, it's as simple as sitting down, having a conversation, laying it all out on the table, and if, you know, they're not willing to to come to the party or to listen to what you're asking or what you are needing from them, it's time to walk away, you know, and I know a lot of women just have this, like, well, not, not a lot of women, but just people in general have, like, this perception that they can change a person. Girl, girl, as is, comes as is. <laughs> as shown on TV. <laughs> as shown on TV, girl, as shown in the, in the months of messaging when you were meeting up with him before you got with him, girl. So, um, I reckon a second thing I wish I knew when I was 18 would be save some money. <laughs> what are you doing? Bitch, you don't need all those clothes to impress all those people who don't give a fuck about you. Like, what are you up to getting out a credit card to buy clothes to post on Instagram about people that don't give a fuck about you? Like, it's not realistic. You know, living in New Zealand these days, especially, and I know you, you probably, like, will remember what it's like to live here, sis. It's not cheap. No. The cost of living is so expensive in New Zealand, and those were one of the reasons why, like, my whole family moved over to Australia. But when you're going to uni, per se, you know, you're freshly 18, you're going to uni, you get your, you know, student allowance, and, you know, that thousand dollars you get at the beginning, and what did what do people do? In our <laughs> Don't spend it on partying, bitch. No, they bought Kathmandu jackets. Uh, oh my god, really? What yeah. did you spend your thousand dollar course related costs on? Be honest, I'll be straight I up. I didn't buy a Kathmandu jacket. I still don't own one till this day. But <laughs> I think I used it on. I don't know what I, I think it was just like some clothes and uh, textbooks. I remember I bought textbooks and then I think I bought a laptop as well. Same, I bought a laptop and I was so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> but I think now that like we're in our mid to late 20s, um, if I had would have saved money from back then, because I did have a job, but I was, you know, part time. But if I did save a little bit, you know, at a time, it doesn't have to be hundreds. I wouldn't have to, you know, kind of struggle and kind of wait for things to happen. You know, I could have bought my house. I could have bought a car. I could have had all the things I wanted if I was patient enough to save and not to spend to impress other people. Oh, flat out, sis. You know, I think back to uni and, oh, bro, we were so fucking broke. Like, I could, <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> but, you know, growing up poor, you know, that's the only way you really know how to live. And it's actually a really hard mentality to kind of get out of because you're always worrying like, oh, am I going to have enough food? Like, am I going to have enough to, to pay my rent next week? You know, and like, you just, you really have to do the work to get financially smart, you know, and it's not just going to come to you, especially if you grew up like us, like fucking poor uh you're gonna have to do a lot more work than someone who say comes from money and comes from people or well, you know families with parents who give them like a lot of teaching about you know saving and 
and finances and investing and, and you know all that sort of thing like my parents don't know jack shit about that stuff so i don't know jack shit about that stuff unless i seek out the information myself but yeah. i've really had to work to learn how to how to save because my parents when i was working when i was in school my parents would take my money off me like they wouldn't let me manage it and it kind of got to a point where like i figured out that they were spending it and i was absolutely upset i was so fucking cut um and then like when i went to university they didn't really help me that much and it was really hard and you know i wish now looking back that i hadn't gone to university just for the sake of pleasing my parents and and not looking like a loser after high school because there's this, just this narrative around university where it's like that's the be all or end all of success and it fucking isn't it's a lie a scam a fraud <laughs> that's so true so true um I, and I think we kind of got along so well and became really good friends because you had come to Auckland and so did I I came from um Sydney I did high school in Sydney and I came back because um, I was a New Zealand citizen and I couldn't go to um, university in Sydney, so I had to do something. And the only thing in my head was, you know, I'm, I have to go to uni. What else am I going to do? So I think that's why we bonded so well, because we were both struggling financially. Um, I had to get a job and, you know, study and you had to, I, I think you had a job too, didn't you? I had a job at that little pub in Beachland. Yes. Oh. I remember that. And I think, all those like humble beginnings you know they they teach you a lot but we did struggle you know sometimes you have to like count your dollars like can I actually have dinner tonight do I have enough for dinner or can I wait until you know the next student you know <laughs> allowance comes through and I was lucky enough that I had my nana who took me in um after ha I had some issues with a few other family members um and my nana took me in bless her um she's always been there for everybody but I still paid her you know for rent because I, I don't want to live there for free um and yeah. she would cook for us and she was just always there for me so I'll never forget all that she did for me and I was lucky enough to have mm. that otherwise I, I just don't know what I would have done to be honest like it's so hard having a job and studying because you just when do you rest when do you study when, when do, do you rest when do you get time to study oh yeah it was hard it was really difficult it was really hard to but you know i'm so glad that we bonded because oh we just struggled together <laughs> I remember five dollar five dollar me down chips from the from the campus fucking food court thingy oh man yeah when i was broke you would shout me when you were broke i would shout you it was the best Bless you, bless you. Oh. Oi, and do you remember coming to stay at the, um? because you know how I was living in the North Shore, the campus, in the apartments? Do you remember when we had to push the trolley back from the supermarket all the way? <laughs> the oh, I felt, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh, this is not for me, babe. Fucking <laughs> not for me. I remember you made me the ch uh, chicken cranberry like pizza. I was the I always think about that pizza. <gasps> oh, same. I haven't actually made that in so long, sis. You need to. Oh, yeah, I, it was like I, my little I, treat. I, <laughs> oh, recipe video. <laughs> yes, that'd be so cool if we did that. Um, so what would be another thing that you'd kind of want guidance on when you're 18? I still want to talk about the uni stuff because I just want to drill home to everyone out there listening that yeah. you don't need to go to university to, to be successful. Um, you know, in high school, there's a lot of pressure. All they really kind of promote is high school or the military or going to the police. And there's not enough push for like taking a creative career path. Like when I was in school, I wish I was a little bit more staunch to my teachers and said, no, like I am I want to do music and drama because their thing was, oh, you know, like what you're not going to use it after high school, you know, like what kind of job are you going to get with that? And huh, well, fucking look at me now, Tracy. Look at me now, Mary. Like, bitch, eat, your, yeah. eat it. Eat it and get yeah. it. <laughs> and, you know, and um, the, the interesting thing, 
in Sydney was um, when I was doing high school here, they um, pr did promote trades. So um, you could still do year 11 and 12. There's no 13 here. Yeah. And you, if you're interested in like hairdressing, beauty, um, let's say you're interested in carpentry, you know, mechanics, all that stuff, you can go to TAFE after school and get, you know, a certificate three certificate to whatever and you can continue on that way so they did promote that because over here there uh, personally there wasn't that much of a focus on um university it was only you know tailored to the smarter kids like um they would put mm. you in, so the way they schedule your classes was they'll look at your grades and if you're like kind of you know in the higher end they'll put you with all the other high end kids and they'll just structure their classes like that and they'll tailor it around, you know, okay, what will you be successful in? So I think the education system here is great. Like, um, I have a few friends that have gone into the beauty industry and like, you know, when they graduated high school, they had de like their little certificates in beauty and they were able to progress on and, you know, not feel stuck in any way or feel like, oh shit, I didn't go to uni. Like we both have certificates in social sciences, but did we ever use it? I'm 25 grand in debt for fucking what? For what, bro? You know, like, it's, it's bullshit, sis. And we do have similar, um, we do have similar courses like that available in New Zealand through, like, EIT and, like, WinTech and, you know, places like that. But when it comes to, like, performing arts and music and, and content and design and photography and, you know, all those sorts of artsy, creative careers it's actually really hard for people to take you seriously but you know it, it, and for me like when my parents asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up I was like I want to be a superstar I want to be a Hollywood actress you know and they would they were just like you know oh that's too hard it's a brutal industry you know you've got to be a certain type of type of person to you know be be in that space but at the same time you know like when you're a child your dreams, like the dreams you have when you are a child are what you are meant to do in life, you know, and that's why so many people like lose their way or lose focus and think, oh no, it's too hard, like I'll never get there. Um, it's possible, you know, I never thought that I would be doing what I do as like a full-time job ever, period. Like I knew that, <clears throat> like I knew deep down in my heart and my soul that I would be in the entertainment industry but like first of all I don't know how the fuck and then all of a sudden social media happened so that was like a really great medium for me to use to promote my work yeah I'm so proud of you first of all like you've done so well and you should always oh, look back I'm so proud of you <laughs> um I guess I went down like because when I was growing up I always told my parents I wanted to be a lawyer and we both got into law school. Um, you left me. <laughs> um, well, you know, I because that was at that point, I was making the videos in my room. And I was like, I don't give a fuck what it takes. Like, I've tried uni. It's not for me. Not for me, babe. I need to do this. You know, I just knew in my heart and my soul that I needed to get out of that because I knew that I'd end up unhappy. And it was really just a... I'm trying to please my parents, so I'm trying to please whoever else, but the real person you should be pleasing and the real person you need to make happy is yourself. 100%. I agree with you. And my situation was I did a year of law and business um, at AUT, and then um, I left AUT, and then I did, like, online because I just couldn't be bothered going to school. <laughs> Um, because I had to work full time, I needed to support myself, and working part time wasn't enough. I remember that. Yeah, so I couldn't go to school, um, you know, physically be there, but online was just a better choice. And then um, my dad got sick, and I had to drop everything and come to Melbourne and help out. Um, I already had a job at um, AA Insurance, so I was kind of already in the insurance industry. I was just doing customer service, nothing important. We and were doing then, insurance at the same time, eh? I think we were. You were like a collections officer, I think. Am I wrong? Yeah, I was doing insurance collections. Yes. So we were, yeah, we were both doing insurance. I was working full time and studying. And then, you know, I got the news that my dad needed me. Um, I dropped everything, came here. 
and then I've been working full time ever since. I did try. I did get into a bachelor's of psychology um, a couple of months ago, but I also had to drop that because of commitments, and I just didn't have time. And then I just realized I was like, you know what? I'm already earning 100k per year um, without a degree. <laughs> And why do I need this degree? What for? I'm already where I'm supposed to be in the next 10 years. So it's only upwards from here. So if I fall, I won't fall too far because I've secured my spot. <laughs> you have, sis. And, you know, you've worked really, really, really hard to, to get to the spot that you're at. And, you know, it's it's hard because you had to go through that really tough period of studying and working and trying to, you know, come back and be for, there for your dad and that's that's a big responsibility but the fact that you know you've built yourself up you've only been in you know you've only been in Aussie for a few years and like you're already cracking it like you're doing so well yeah I've only been here for four years and um my my colleague she always says you don't know how hard it is to get where you're at right now like you don't understand people spend years trying to get there wow. and you're there so she's like you'll never understand because it was easy for you <laughs> But I think it's all about, you know, your determination. But you've got the tenacity, that's why. Yes. I got the hard work, okay? My work ethic is good, I want to say. Sometimes it's I might true. need time off. <laughs> but I feel like everyone needs time off. And, you know, sometimes my health isn't the best. And But I've always been determined. Like, my my now my goal is not to be something. It's just to be rich. I want money. I'm going to make that happen. Yep, 100% sis. And, you know, never, ever underestimate the power of hard work. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of um, my drive and determination comes from wanting to, to create, you know, something bigger than I'm already doing now. And, you know, back when I was in university and kind of, you know, leaving and, and and just going to work at, at a restaurant like when we the cafe and it's a rolling kebab mopping the floors scrubbing the toilets like this was this was not long ago like five six years ago and you know I, I i just knew that there was more to life than than this but i didn't know what it took back then i was i've always been like a hard worker but now i've had to like switch it up and and kind of level it up and and change how I do things because I was more of like a physical hard worker before, you know, like I'd, I'd do the physical type jobs, but now it's like a mental, mental hard work and staying on top of things, staying organized and, you know, just changing how you live completely because successful people, so it's like successful people are successful in all areas of their life. They've just got their shit together completely. And that's what I aspire to be, bitch. And, you know, like you've really got to, put in the work to actually get to that place and I did not realize that maybe up until like three or four years ago it's yeah. been a rude awakening <laughs> it has been and I, I'm the same as I've had physical jobs um I had I've had jobs since I was in high school so I worked at like McDonald's Hungry Jack's I've you know cleaned the toilets of a pharmacy down the street from my house I've Aww. you know worked at number twos I've worked for I, I always had a job oh my like, god I remember when you worked at number one shoes <laughs> those were the good days man like I, I had a lot of fun because bro didn't friends... I do the refereeing for you I was your referee for that job and you got it I think so yeah so if anyone needs a referee my services are available <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so oh, I, I, I forgot about that I remember them bringing me and I was like, she's amazing. She's punctual. She's hardworking. <laughs> Thank you. It's because of you. Like, um, even. Oh, no, no, no. It was, it was all you girl. But you know, even going through university with you, like, fuck, we, like we, when we were together, we were just the forces and we always got a plus. Oh yes. We did a presentation and we stayed up like oh. pretty much all trying to get that done. All I night. <laughs> can't believe we pulled that out of our ass <laughs> man it was, a good, it was a well deserved a plus because I, I i have anxiety and like public speaking or speaking in any type of form is like very nerve-wracking for me i just i don't know why i can't do it 
Um, and I'll like kind of give myself confidence, but I just, I'm never able to do it. But you always gave me that confidence. You're like, it's fine. Just do it. Just get a good grade. Just do it, sis. <laughs> yeah, it, it was yes, hard. But thank you. No, and I think it was us together, girl. It was a team effort. Yes. Uh, and I remember us walking at night to VK by your house. <laughs> do you remember that? Bro, and getting like the what is it? Yeah, I remember get like the little radio combo, <laughs> five dollar one with the Sunday. What is it called? A stunner meal. <laughs> yeah, that's what we got. It was. I think those times, like I really reflect upon them because I had a good time, even if we didn't have much. I had such a good time with you, and like, and I think okay. you know we've kind of we haven't kind of been in contact much in the past like two three years because we've just been so busy with our lives. We checked in with each other every now and then, but we just mm. never got to kind of like sit down and chat. So it's really good to kind of reflect on those times and be like, man, I wish I, you know, would have done a few things differently, but I had a good time overall. Same. Yeah, same sister. And like, you know, even though it was like a struggle um, at university and like, you know, not even being able to afford my bus to get to university some days, you know, I look back and it makes me grateful for what we've got now and, like, you know, where, we are, where we're at. Yeah, I didn't think we would be here at all. Like, I was like, man, I'm, I'm just going to have to, you know, do, like, paycheck to paycheck type of job, nine to five. Okay. I mean, I still do nine to five, but it's not paycheck to paycheck anymore because I'm being smarter with my money. I've never really, like, my parents always told me to say, but I never listened to them. I'm like, whatever, I'm not going to listen to you. Because <laughs> my parents were always, like, um, kind of like gypsies. So I, I don't really have a place to call home. We've just moved around so much and been to so many different places that, like, I never held a connection to a spot. And, like, now I'm thinking back and I'm like, you know what, I would really like to build something and have something you know for my future generation and they can look back and be like man thanks you did that for me because I didn't have that like I always grew up poor and you know we had what we had and we just made good with what we had so now I want more than what we had <laughs> and you know it's just Same. about how it's not about opportunity as per se it's about you putting yourself in that position where those opportunities come to you instead of you waiting you sitting here waiting for it to come it won't come it doesn't work that you gotta way. go and get it 100 percent. so you you've got to put yourself in a position where if an opportunity comes you're like i'll take it instead of being like i'm not gonna do any hard work but if it comes it comes not nah. you gotta reel it in no you have to put in the half mahi you've got to you know things don't just fall in your lap you know and and even with my experiences and being in the social media industry and like my longevity in it, you know, like I'm, I've been popping since fucking 2015, sis, you know, and like I've only just kept growing at like a really steady pace. But, <clears throat> you know, my dream is was always to like make movies and, and write, you know, comedy series. Like the Laughing Samoans and Chris Lilly are big, I'm um, big fan, big fucking fan. Love. And they were people who really inspired me to, yeah, to, to, to do what I do today. But like back when I was at uni and I was filming my, <laughs> I was filming my little videos in my room on my little iPhone 5, no tripod, holding the phone like this, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't even know how to edit a video properly, you know, but I had to put in the work to learn how to edit properly, to learn about angles, to learn about, you know, lighting and, and, and continuity and, and things like that. But, you know, there's such a wealth of knowledge on the internet these days that you can, you literally don't have to go to uni and you don't have to really go through all that hard shit that, you know, kind of our generation went through because you've just got the world at your feet, guys. Like, I don't think people understand this. You know, and, and people think 30's fucking old, sis. Oh, fuck, 30's young. Bitch, I'm yes. sleeping when I'm fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking that the other day. I was like, man, like, I'm I'm 28 now. And I was like, man, 30 is not old because I'm closer to it now. And Are I'm you like, really? Oh. Yeah, I'm 28. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my I God. Know. Not that, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, whoa. Because yeah. we met in our early 20s, like, oh, wait, no, I was 18 when we met. Holy shit. Yeah. 
I was like 21 or 20 ish, 21, I think. Yeah, yeah you would have been about, yeah, you would have been like 21, 22. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like when you're back at, you know, uni or whatever you're doing at that young age, I think the one thing that resonates with me is you can't trust everyone, whether it's family, friends, colleagues, um, you just, they you can't trust everybody. And I know that not everyone has ill intentions towards you, but you need to invite people into your lives that actually benefit you. Not people that are just dormant and don't do and have anything good for intentions you. for you. Yeah, P genuine people, because that way you know your life will improve, the quality of your life will improve. And sometimes you may feel like, oh, you know, can I trust them? Can I not trust them? Just have a genuine conversation. And if you put out, you know, good stuff, if you put if you put up put your best self forward, you, that's what you'll get back. And that's why you know I feel like I trusted. A lot of people that I shouldn't have trusted and looking back you know I was I was I went through a lot and my parents always stood by me and they always helped me when I needed them and I'm so grateful that I had parents that were supportive not financially because I never asked for money after 18 um, but you know just to be there for me and be like it's fine it's okay like just to give me great advice and I think sometimes you just need your mom to just call you and tell you it's gonna be okay. Cause I I went through like a health scare back when I think you had already left, and I was I was like renting a room yeah, in I this house. Do you remember that? Oh my god! Yes, that crazy lady. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> she would okay. She would come into my room and look through my like trash. Like I had a little bin by my desk, and she would like Honor. through my trash. Honor. Who does that? Why are you in my room that I pay for and why are you going through my rubbish? That's so weird. And I lost a few, I, I lost a few of my like rings there. I had a, I've, I've never been able to locate those rings, but like, I just trusted a lot of people I shouldn't have. And some of them were family. And like right now I'm cordial with them for my parents out of respect for my parents, not respect for them because I will tell you straight that I do not like you. But I've held myself yeah. back and I've been a nice Indian girl and I've said, yeah, okay, hi, how are you? Because my parents don't want me to kind of go hood on anyone. So I've held it down. But yeah, just, yeah, trust, it's just, it's a big thing for me now in my adult life as well. And like, I don't trust everybody and like, I keep it cordial, but like, you don't have to be nasty or anything unless someone's kind of nasty to you. But yeah. And I think in your, like, I guess what you do, trust is a big thing for you as well, because I'm sure you've come across shitty people as well. So, so I've called way too many people, a friend who, you know, these are people that I just see every weekend at parties and just get on the piss with, you know, not people that I would have, like, a deep connection with and, like, know and, and can share my my innermost thoughts and, and, and fears and all that shit with. But, you know, I can count on my hand, you know, on my hands now, like, who my true friends are. Um, but, yeah, I am really cautious about letting people in my life because I've just been, I've been fucked up so many times, sis, you know. And and it was by people as well at, at some stages where I actually trusted them and had, like, you know, invited them into my life, you know. Uh, like, recently um kind of like last year I was getting robbed by like my flatmates and you know oh my, my sister fucking caught one of them with my shoes on at a party and you know like these are people that I really trusted like really cared about and you know you get to a point where you're just physically exhausted and don't have the energy to have those sorts of people around you anymore you know and with my parents, like, <clears throat> I don't have a very good relationship with them, like, you know, contrary to you. Um, so I did find it really hard to find acceptance within, you know, any kind of, like, friendship groups because, you know, I was missing that connection with my parents. So I was always desperately looking for something else, you know, new people to have in my life and, and, and people to get to know and, and blah, 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 blah. But I've learned over the years that it's quality over quantity, bitch. You know, I'm still, I'm still like best friends with my best friends from when I was like five years old, 
you know, and like even though we met at university, like we're still fucking like we still get on like so well, sis, and you know, we have the best conversations, you know, we can talk about things openly, honestly, and just know that like it's not gonna go anywhere else other than between us. Yeah, exactly. I hate shit talkers. <laughs> I, I used to, you know, do that because that's what I was surrounded with and I thought that was normal because my community is like oh, that. Same, same. People talk so much shit in my community and I, I'm, I don't mean the Indian community because I'm not. I'm Fijian Indian. So there's a, there's a different community. Yeah, we all look the same, I know, but it's different and I can't speak for the Indian community because I'm not part of it. I don't know about it. But we just talk so much shit and I feel like my community is – we're, we're so hyped up on bringing people down and being better than everyone. And, you know, because I was so that, I thought I needed to be like that because that was normal to me. Tall poppy now, syndrome, sister. Yeah, and I don't want to be like that. I'm like, you know what, Neither. you did better than me. Good for you, man. I'm so proud of you. Good job. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, be one Yeah, 100%. Because I don't want to be in that position. No, I'm not one of those phony-ass bitches who – you know, if my friend's doing really well, like, I'm salty, like, fuck no, I'm so happy if my friends are doing well, and I'm so proud of them, you know, and, and, and when you, when you have negative people in your life who can't see outside of, you know, like, outside of what I've got already, it's because they're insecure, they don't know what they want, they don't know who they are, and they've got a lot of growing and maturing to do, and, you know, I wished, even like back when I was kid, man, I you know, I, I we've all been through it. We all talk shit, we all gossip, you know, when we're younger. Um, but I'm so glad now. I feel so free not doing that shit anymore. And like yeah, I just feel like I can make true connections with people, you know, people, you know, like my friends, I would trust with my life. All the friends that I have around would literally I know they would do anything for me and I would do anything for them you know and I need people who are going to ride for me die not necessarily die for me but you know what I mean like I you know we have to have those people around not people who are just going to pull you down you know because they want you on their, their level because they're insecure about their lack of you know and it's so important to just have those good few people around you and not worry about what the fuck everyone else is up to because at the same time sis like if you're putting all that energy into talking about other people and worrying about what the fuck they're doing and like oh shame look at them or like oh look at that you know you're to actually robbing yourself of time that you could be using to better yourself to grow to to become the person that you're meant to be 100 percent and I, I completely agree with you because I feel like you're lowering your standards and you're lowering uh, like the way people look at you because, you know, there's a few ladies out there in my community. They're known to be the shit. We call them radio announcers because they, you know, they, they tell people. Your business. <laughs> <laughs> and we call some. Oh, fuck, that's great. Oh, fuck, that's funny. <laughs> because they tell people your business like um i'll give you an example um i had taken a few photos that were kind of revealing but if, during the circumstance i feel like i want i felt good about myself and you know i pregnancy took those shoot. And... sorry your pregnancy shoot yeah oh ho carry on tell them the story yeah okay so um, yeah, I was pregnant. Uh, we were in lockdown. I uh, couldn't get a photographer to come out and, you know, do the, I wanted to do like a meal bath and, you know, have like pretty flowers around me because I felt good about myself. It was my first pregnancy. So I wanted to show like my child, you know, pictures, like, look, I, d I did all these things and I wanted to look back at them. So we couldn't do any of that. So um, my husband helped me take like boudoir style photos of myself. And I had, and like, my husband didn't say anything about them. He loved them. My in-laws didn't say anything about them. They loved it. My parents didn't say anything. No, no, no one in my family or extended family said not even one bad word about it. And then this lady who's, like, related to us, like, maybe, like, distant, like, so distant, like, it doesn't even fucking matter. Um, he was showing my photos to people that didn't really know me. Like, there was a lady that I met once 
during like a birthday and she knew my aunt and she was like oh do you know that like you know this person is showing her photos to people and talking <laughs> shit about like what kind of photos are you taking first of all it's 2021 um I'm get up with the sure times lady exactly and my my point is like we were saris right our like blouses are up to here your stomach is showing anyways what I wore wasn't any different to that. Maybe my thighs were out, but come on, man. They're thighs. Everyone has one or two. But it's 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 just the standard that they set, like, oh, my God, she's wearing something that's short. Oh, my God, it's revealing. Mm -hmm. But you, you wear blouses like that. Now, your stomach, your muffin top is out. It's out. Everyone can Girl. see it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my, like, my, and when my aunt, she, my aunt, for me to tell me that this was being said about me my aunt called my mom and my mom was like okay and then my mom's like oh um you know so and so has been talking I was like okay I'll wait for her and her husband to come over we'll have a discussion in front of her <laughs> and she knows. I know she knows and since then she has not called us or shown up to my house since then and I'm waiting I'm waiting and I, so I said to my parents I've respected you and I've not gone off on anybody just to respect you and hold the peace in the community but this time around because it's talking about my body and our community is so toxic toxic when it comes to bodies I'm gonna say something and she's gonna know to never talk shit about anybody because she's a she's a radio announcer everybody in the community knows she talks shit about everyone. I'll call here, I'll call there. Oh, did you know this is happening in this household? Have you looked at your own household? Do you see the problems that are on your plate? Just makes me so pissed off. I'm so see, mad. That's where insecure people, sis. That's why insecure people like her, you know, she's probably, you know, hasn't had sex for years, you know. Her husband probably doesn't even fucking touch her anymore. And, you know, people like that, project their own insecurities within their own life on other people and, and worry about other people's downfalls to make them feel better about themselves like it's it's actually like a really sick attitude to have like it disgusts me makes me feel sick um and you know i feel it's quite similar within the the um new zealand community whereby like if you're doing good like or if you're trying to make something out of yourself or if you're you know posting posting up photos like you or you know showing off your nice things or whatever people just talk shit you know and like oh in fact they think they're all that or they think they're all this you know and it's like well it's actually not like that you know like people work hard to get to where they are people people you know they're living out their lives they're living their best lives you know and people who want to tear them down are doing it because they wish that they had the confidence to do what that person is doing like the lady who was talking shit about you she probably wants to wear a bikini to the beach sir so she probably like i would love to have a good body wear it to you know wear, wear a bikini to the beach and all that and that's why she will be talking shit about you you know oh it just it just drives me insane because for me because i i'm not i used to be dramatic but like i'm i don't talk shit about anybody i don't Ooh. Uh, announce things to people that don't need to know like I don't do those things I keep myself out of it like, honestly like I've cut ties with so many people in my family in the community I just don't want to engage because people Same. they I don't know what it is like maybe it's because I have a big mouth or something but like I I know that people feel uncomfortable when I'm around because I just say what I think and they Same. just I Fine. It's because they don't want to accept it. It's the truth. Like, I'm going to say how I feel and how I see it. I'm going to call it out. And they don't like that. Yeah. And I think I think a big part of this is, of, of, you know, get it being successful and going ahead and doing what you want to do and living your best life. It's about confidence. It's about, like, you know, self-esteem and self-reassurance. You know, like, you and I, we're quite self-assured, you know, and – that's why people feel a little bit like intimidated because we will fucking say if we don't like something or if we're not appreciating something, you know, and that's why a lot of people don't, don't fuck with us. But hey, you know, at the end of the day, I'd rather be real than and be myself than sugarcoat, you know, myself or or dumb myself down 
to sue other people because nah, nah, bitch, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I've arrived, and she's large and in charge. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And I feel like, it, yeah. like going. And back I to what, sorry, sister. That's okay. Going back to what you said, like successful people, they have their shit together in all aspects of their lives. Obviously, it's a journey, yep. and it's not just gonna straight out the bat be, you know, your best self. It, it you learn from your mistakes, you learn from everything that goes on in your life. You know, the tra- tragedies. I can't yep. even say that word. Tragedies <laughs> that go on in your life, they teach you to be, you know, who you are today. And you can only work on bettering yourself. And you know, the way you can do that, I feel like, is not giving a shit about what other people think or what they're saying. And sometimes it's about standing up for yourself and let them talk. Yeah, you yeah. can let them talk. Um, but in this instance, I'm not gonna let her talk. I'm gonna shut that shit down, and I can't wait to do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I I can't wait for her to come over. I'm waiting. It's been months, man. You should call. You should call me when you do it. <laughs> But um, I know she knows. I for sure know she knows. But, like, I think going back to, like, uni days, I feel like I wouldn't be who I am today if we didn't go through what we went through together and separately. Like, I'm glad we had those struggles. But if, like, our advice can help somebody, then, like, great. Even one person, then great. Like, you know, you're more than welcome to message us um privately or you can you know write down at the bottom we'll reply and you know if you need advice if you just need someone to listen because even like during uni like mental health is important too and sometimes the things that you go through they can affect so, you i mean, found it so hard to get out of bed some days that's so true i was the same and i, I still feel like that sometimes same. and uni can be really stressful and overwhelming and Um, We did the question box about, you know, did you go to uni and are you using your degree? And most of the people said, you know, no, I'm not using my degree. I'm doing something completely different. And that's okay too. Sometimes, you know, you know what you think, you know what you want, you go and do it. And then when you go into the work workforce, it's completely different because uni doesn't teach you like, this is what you're going to, how it's going to be at work. It's, it's giving you right but you're not gonna get that experience unless you do like I don't know work experience or something but it, the work for yeah. workforce is completely different it's a it's a whole new game out there you sometimes it can be competitive and sometimes you're going to come across people that want to cut you down and you know you come yeah. across um, managers that you know more than but they're your bosses and that's just how life is so it's how you hold yeah. yourself and your standards for yourself. And then from there, you can kind of like teach yourself on how what you want to be when you kind of like grow up into that person. So that's what I think life is all yeah. about, just learning from your experiences, but not having um, other people's expectations on you. Yeah, not allowing, not allowing other people's expectations to control what you actually do with your life. You know, because I come from a small fucking town, Napier, you know, I grew up in Marae Nui and, you know, my all my teachers, you know, I was fucking smart at school, sis, like, I was an honours student, like, no fucking shit, and I was, like, in the top sports teams, you know, I was, like, top of my drama class, top of my English, Japanese, you know, and <clears throat> I always had these, like, I don't know, I always just felt like people thought that I would never amount to anything, you know, because of where I came from and, and, and who my fucking family is and blah, blah, blah. But, like, my big driving force was actually just to prove so many motherfuckers wrong and be like, yeah, eat that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <Eat> that! <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, we went to university. It wasn't for me, babe. You know, I tried it out. Now I'm in twenty five thousand dollars worth of debt, and but I've learned from it, and I know now for sure what like my career path is. And you know, I do think in life it is important to kind of make those mistakes and not be too hard on yourself about making them. You know, just just got to keep moving forward, just got to keep pushing on. Other, you know, you can't just sit there all day and have a fucking sulk about like, oh fuck, like. 
you know, oh, I don't get that job, or, oh, you know, things, everything happens for a reason, and everything in good time, you know what I mean, like, if it's meant for you, it will be for you, you know, and <clears throat> I know a lot of people who, unfortunately, you know, coming from a small town, you know, unfortunately, you know, people from there have just this mentality of just settling, having kids, buying, oh, actually, actually, sorry, that's the wrong order, getting into a relationship, getting engaged, married, house, children. You know, people think that that is like the pinnacle of success and I completely fucking disagree. You know, I'm 25, I don't have any children, you know, and and it's been great to have that time in my early 20s to actually get to know myself and who the fuck I am and what the fuck I want, you know. with And, you know, my, my family pressures me all the time to, to have a kid or to, you know, settle down and get married. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not keen for that, babe. It's not for me. And you really do have to be really self-assured, be be self-confident to to live the life that you've always envisioned for yourself, you know, and, and not let other people's expectations rule you. Or, you know, oh, fuck people back home, they're talking shit. People talk shit about me and Kiana, my friend, who we're both from Napier, and um, my other friend, Kendra, you know, we're all in Wellington, we're all from Hawke's Bay, we're all, you know, we're like a little group down here, but people back home talk shit about us and, like, what we do, and, and you know, oh, fuck, they're all shit, like, they're not even going to make it, like, people don't actually know, like, how well we're really doing, you know, and it's, 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 I don't, I don't feel the need now to prove to other people how well we're doing, I'll just let my shit do the talking, you know what I mean? And it's so great to be at a place, you know, where you know you don't have to feel like you need to prove yourself to people. I don't care. I really don't give a fuck what you think about me. Like I'm doing my thing and you know that that's 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 what blocks people's blessings is because they're too fucking worried about what the bro down the road thinks of them. Oh ho sis <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, because I'm so different to you in that sense, because I did get into that relationship, I did get engaged, got married, and now I have a baby. Um, but now yeah. I'm learning to, you know, understand myself, who I am, what I like. And, um, you know, I feel like it's just opposite because you, you've done the whole who am I, what do I want in life and stuff like that in the beginning. But I'm now because I have this family unit now, now I'm thinking about myself and I'm doing it later in life. It's, and not too, it's never too late though, sis. It's no. never too late. But I wish I would have done it, you know, before getting into that relationship because I don't think I like valued myself at all. Like I was just like, well, you know, it's, it's fine. I'll, I'll just, you know, get into this relationship. I'll get married, have my child because in our community as well, it's so big to like, you know, mar get married, get married, have a kid, have a kid. And then, you know, your career and all that stuff comes later. Like you, those are the goals in life when it comes to mm. the community. And that's what I thought for such a long time. But now like looking back, I wish I would have kind of loved myself first and done things for myself first. But now I'm learning to do those things. And I, it's great. Like I know it's a bit late, but like you said, it's never too late. Unless you're dying. It's really never too late, my girl. It's never. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're fucking on your last breath, bitch, it's never too late. Exactly. <laughs> and now I'm kind of like, okay, well, what do I want? Like, I, I want success. And, okay, what is success? So I'm trying to figure those things out. And I know for sure that, you know, I want to work for myself. I want to build something for myself where I can look back on it and my children can look back and be like, yeah, mom did that for us. And she made that happen for us because I wish my parents had, you know, some type of, I don't know, like a home, you know, a place to call home and be like, yeah, that was our house. You know, I, I didn't have any of that stuff. And to me, it wasn't yeah. important. I just never had it. You don't know until you, you know, have it to be like, oh, shit, that's actually pretty nice. So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to build. And uni was just like a stepping stone to see, you know, if this like a professional you know career is for me and to be frank it's not and it doesn't have to be this way for everybody like you may want to be a doctor and save some lives amazing and you may want to be a lawyer and you know do all that stuff even better and but like don't go to uni just because everyone else wants you to go to uni go to uni because you want to 
because there is debt yep. it's a lot of money yep. and you have to pay it back um it is a struggle <laughs> it is cool. and i think your mental health needs to be considered too like can you mentally uh, you know capable of handling uni work because it's not a walk in the park it's not like high school it's completely different they don't give a fuck if you had in your assignment or not they don't care it's not you know they they're not going to chase you up for it they don't ask they don't even care they'll just mark it down as not handed in and fail you yeah and then that's your money gone down the drain because you just didn't hand it in yep yeah um, and i feel like also university i mean sorry high school doesn't actually properly prepare you for the real world like you know it's all about oh let's do PE and let's let's read some books and oh you know like why were the curtains fucking read like give us the 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 what, what, what was the author's vision for this description and it's like bro life is a lot more about discovering who you are and and, and like using that actually using that time in high school to fucking try everything out and see what you like and see what you don't like, you know. And I did everything, sis. I literally did fucking debating, theatre, like musical productions. I did like stage challenge, sports, everything. And I feel like that was a really crucial time for me to be doing that, those sorts of things because it allowed me to explore what I liked, what I didn't like, what I was good at, what I'm not good at. And, yeah, like I, I was just... I guess I had kind of like an unconscious confidence in myself to go out and just try these new things because a lot of young ones, they don't, they, they will just listen to the careers advisor or just listen to their parents and go with whatever they, they say. And, you know, you really have to like use this time during high school to figure out who you are, what you like, what you're good at. And you know, you'll figure it all out, you know. If you want to make that your career, you fucking can, you know. Yeah, just believe in yourself. And I, I was the opposite to you. I, like, didn't do much in high school. Um, I did, like, dance and stuff, but, like, I didn't yeah. do any. Like, I would want to try it out, but, like, I was a very shy, like, person. And, like, I would get really nervous and, like, mm. I just kind of, like, talk myself out of doing things and, like, I think like I let myself down in that way because I just kind of was like, oh, what are they gonna think? Like I'm gonna look stupid, or you know, oh, I, I don't, I don't think I can do it. Like just, just try it. Like if you look stupid, so what? Like everyone else does too. You don't have to. You're not the only so one. So the fuck what? Yeah, and Who I, I'm only just starting to build my confidence though because I'm, I'm still very like reserved and like. Oh, I don't know, you know, what are, what is everyone else gonna think? And I'm i I'm still kind of learning how to let go of that mentality and mm. be my genuine self and you know, because the the way you think, no one knows how you think. So I wanna be the person that I you know, how I think and how I am in my head. That's what I what I wanna be. And I'm slowly working towards it. It it, it is a journey for me as well. Like I wish I was as confident as you are. Oh girl, you know it's um it's it's funny though because like I was born with it you know like I was born I was I've always been out there always been loud always been just fucking ah you know <laughs> I here I am and you know but in saying that when I actually moved schools in my last year of school I moved to a co-ed school where there was boys you know and and, and I'd never been experienced adolescent males because I'd been at an all girls school that whole time and I got really badly bullied when I moved to um Taradale High School and like I would have kids on the internet like writing to me on Ask Your Fan being like oh kill yourself like did you need that pie at lunchtime and just saying horrible nasty things just like calling me fat for everything I was not fat and that's what fucks me off too is looking back but that's a conversation for another day um and I actually did kind of lose my confidence for a really long time there. Like, I would say that I've only kind of regained my confidence back in the last, like, three years. You know, I, and going through the, the doubtful period in my life where I was like, oh, this is not going to work. You know, like, this, you know, this shit isn't going to work out. Like, I'll just, I'll just go back and work like a normal job. It's fine. You know, like, it'll, that'll do. And I tried that and I was so fucking unhappy and I was like, nah, I'm, 
you know what? Fuck these cunts. You know, fuck everyone. Uh, one, wait, sis, sis really snapped one day and was just like, fuck everyone. Fuck what everyone thinks. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just going to do what I love. And if you don't like it, then you can fucking boot it. You can fucking get, you know? And, like, I've regained that confidence back and I love it. Like, but at the same time, I still struggle with, like, my anxiety and, like, my mental health and stuff because that's, like, a new thing that kind of developed after all the bullying and shit happened. Um, well, actually, no, yeah. It's kind of always been around, but, like, it just became more intense and I was more aware of it as I got older. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, mental health, that's why, like, I always say, man, mental health is so important. People overlook it so much. And, like, even in my community, you know, like, everything comes wow. down to, oh, it's it's everything else apart from your mental health, you know? Like, if there's a problem or if you're going through something, you're experiencing, you know, depression, whatever, the symptoms, they're not they're not mental health related. It's it's something else. It's always something else. So that's no. that's why, like, if I can, I would love to, like, you know, bring awareness to it and get people help when they need it, not when it's too late because there's too many, you know, issues that go on in, like, the community where, you know, it's overlooked or it's just not considered. And it shouldn't be that way. Because you can only be your true self and you can truly only be happy when your mental health is right. If it's not, then you're just, you know, it's a vicious cycle and, you know, things happen. But it's it's knowing when to ask for help. That's where I think I lack. I don't like asking for help. So, you Same. know, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Like, because you, you don't want people to be like, oh, there's something wrong with that person. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I bottled up all my mental health issues and, like, all the shit that I was going through, you know, because I just felt, I don't know, I didn't really have anyone that I could necessarily confide in, plus our mental health system is fucking shit. Uh, But, you know, one day I just absolutely broke the fuck down and ended up in, like, the psych ward. And, you know, it wasn't a very nice experience. So you really, like, if, if anything, if you learn anything from this podcast, this is the one thing that I really want people to take away is that your mental health, if your mental health is not working, nothing else will. You have to you have to focus on up here because you live in here. We live in our heads, you know what I mean? And it has to be right so that you can function and that you can, you know, do all, all these things. And I think it's so important to note as well, sis, that like people underestimate the the power of, you know, doing a bit of painting and going for a walk and like doing just those little things of self-care just to keep your fucking sanity, you know? Yeah, 100%. Self-care is so, so, so important. And I only just, I've done like training in suicide prevention and like mental health and stuff because of my job. And it's only then that I realized how important self-care is. Because when you listen to, you know, other people's issues, when you kind of learn about mental health, it, it is a bit draining and you need to kind of recharge. You need to recharge yourself. You need to do something that you enjoy, even if it's for five minutes. Do something, you know, plug, yeah. like put everything away. Unplug and do something. Turn your phone that, off. Turn your phone off. 100%. And self-care, yeah. So, like, you know, when you're at uni, self-care is important. You need to be at the right place mentally to be successful at uni. And if it's not for you, then that's okay as well. Like, at least you gave it a go. You saw what it was like. Okay, cool. It's not for me. You and I can both attest to that. It wasn't for us. And, you know, we've gone yeah. in direct that we now are kind of happy with and you know we're trying to build on that now and that's where we at and then there's yeah. other people that have gone through the uni system and you know have professional careers and are happy with that good for them too so it's just about you know what you want to do in life and not putting unrealistic expectations on yourself and not putting other people's expectations on yourself start out small 100 percent. yeah start out small like don't don't dive completely in because, you know, like, especially, like, I can only speak for myself because I'm going to speak from my experiences. Uh, yeah. Like, especially within the entertainment industry, like, I dived, dived, dove, I don't know what the correct word is, but I just went straight in and yeah. didn't know what I was getting myself into, was completely fucking oblivious, you know, and... Uh, 
you've really got to navigate yourself in a way that is kind of also like a little bit self-preserving so you don't give too much of yourself away um because I felt like I did that especially when I moved to Auckland um and and big cities like that they just fucking eat you up and swallow you whole bitch like it's the it takes no prisoners it gives no fucks you know yeah I agree with you um I guess yeah like I don't know how to how else to explain it but like just take it easy man like you don't have to be so hard on yourself yeah that's the one piece of advice yeah. that I would give myself like take it easy you don't have to be so hard on yourself and just just take it one step at a time you're still young bitch what's the rush <laughs> yeah what are you rushing for like like you're gonna get it like you're gonna get to where you want to go it, it'll happen but just you don't have to be there right away yeah and you know i think also it's okay to decide oh this isn't really for me anymore and and to move on to you know another job or or another relationship or even another town you know like it's okay it's okay to make those changes like don't ever be scared to to venture outside of your bubble otherwise you will never know what the fuck you missed out on you know like mm -hmm. i um you know even now it's COVID now but i would love to fucking move to japan even if it's only for like six months i would just love to go and live there and you know obviously like i'm really nervous because uh of like the cultural differences like i'm part japanese by the way but like it's 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 like a whole new world and, and it, it, i'm quite insecure about it because i want to make sure that i'm not going to like offend anyone culturally and, and all that sort of thing but at the same time like you just have to go for things. If, if it's in your head, if it's on your heart, you just have to go and do it. Because if you don't, like, on your deathbed, those are the things that you will regret. Like, not, not like, necessarily the shitty things that you did, but you will regret, like, what you didn't do. Yeah, be open to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change is good. Oh, change yeah. is great. I love change. Like, I know it's hard for some people because you kind of, like, either you haven't experienced much change or you just you know just you you're questioning it too much just be open to it like what's the worst that can happen okay you're not successful in that change that's fine it's okay cool you all good on to the next one sister. yeah you do not have to be successful in everything you do everything is a learning like it's a learning curve you learn from everything you do in life yeah. and if you do learn yeah. from it Right. If you don't, then maybe your lesson needs to be a little bit more, you know, harsh. <laughs> but it, it happens, and maybe you I need another lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like I said, like in closing though, uni not for everybody. Wasn't for us. If it's for you, fantastic. If it's not for you, give it a go. You might like it. It might be for you. But you cannot predict anything. You cannot predict anything that's going to happen in your future. Anything can happen. Anything can happen at any moment, so be open to everything and work hard. Have a good work ethic and you'll get to where you want to go. Yes. yes. Save money. Don't give yes. a shit about, like, don't worry about relationships. You know, you know, you can if you want to, but, like, at the end of the day, a relationship doesn't define you, a job doesn't define you, and, you know, just just stay humble, be kind, be confident and yeah live out your dreams sis yes yes and it, uh, there is no time frame to success that's most important there is no, no time there isn't someone else's time frame or timeline isn't reflective of your success like you could shada you could be more successful and get to where you want to do before me but that shouldn't i shouldn't put pressure on myself to be like oh man i, I don't have it together it's it your success does not relate to mine because everyone's different our yeah, life exactly so our, everything is different so don't compare anyone else's success to yours because it's just not worth it to put that pressure on yourself 100 percent, sis right yeah. are we wrapping this one up then are we yes 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 oh um, wait i'm so happy with how this went yes me too it was a great conversation and Cut if out you liked what we were talking about please let us
know by liking this video, subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell so you know when we're posting. We will be posting once a week and our next episode will be about relationships. So we're going to gloss, get some advice and hopefully yeah. you all can learn something from it or take something away from it. And, and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.